everyone, and welcome back to the movie trivia showdown alongside the great showdown head writer, BJ Campbell. I am Mark Baby Carrots Ellis and Patrick, these are the kinds of matches that I know you and your team labor over because we're talking Star Wars, but it's also a matchup that I think has the fans frothing at the mouth. When the bracket came out for the Star Wars tournament, everybody looked at potential matchups, and I think a lot of them were circling the possibility of seeing Gold Leader taking on Laura Lights Out Kelly. Well, that possibility has become fact, and it's about to go down. Look, man, there's not a better matchup that we could have absolutely hoped for out of this. These are two of the most fearsome competitors in the league. Gold Leader has had a stellar year. Just look at what he's done coming in. And then, of course, Laura Kelly, her entire career is just scary how good she is. I can't imagine that this match doesn't go into sudden death. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to be here for at least the next six hours. I mean, they both come for blood every time we've seen them in a matchup of any sort. And we know what Lights Out has been capable of in the past, but we've also seen Gold Leader. You can't even really call him a rookie anymore because he's played so well. He's been so prolific in his debut season, and now it's tournament time. He doesn't feel like a rookie. He just feels like one of the best in the business. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it feels like he's been here since we started. Like, it feels like he probably should have played Ken Knapsack back in the day. And look what he just did to Joseph Scrimshaw. That was pretty crazy man i'm very excited to see how this is going to play out it's the ultimate matchup of when luke asked yoda that question in empire strikes back when the cute little wrinkly muppet was on his back and he said is the dark side stronger more powerful and yoda's like no 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 well it might be given the fact that these two tend to lean towards the dark side occasionally in star wars matches so I, you don't need to hear it from me or pj take a look for yourself and your winner I wasn't going to just like sit by and let that be the end of my season. It was just not going to happen. It wasn't going to happen. So here we are. I've got my next shot. I'm ready. Let's go. And we're back. I want to talk about the 2020 tournament. Round two didn't go so well for me. I went in a little too confident against Ace. Mr. Upset City 2020. Laura Kelly, right? So I don't expect her to be rattled. Always expect that she's gonna play at her best and you'll basically never be disappointed because you'll always be ready for her throwing haymakers at you. But that was then. I wanna talk about now. Now that I've introduced a little anarchy and put the kibosh on the division's knight and not so shiny armor, I'm back at the top of my game. That might have been one of the strongest, most confident performances I've seen from you. And that's just who she is, is that when she needs the help, she calls in the troops and we do everything she needs for that backup. But she's a monster. Gold leader, you know me. I am taking a brisk walk again. It's not the morning. It wasn't morning last time. I just said it was because I like saying brisk morning walk. But I'm doing this to celebrate and to commemorate the victory against the late, somewhat great Joseph Scrimshaw. Gold Leader was just a little bit better all the way through. It seemed like he got warmed up, he had an early miss, and then he was just going and going, and now he is gone to the second round. They got me playing Laura now. I, you know, I just don't, I don't really have anything to say here. I'm tired of making these promos just so that I could just win and keep going. But this time is different. This time, Mr. Upset City, Andres Cabrera, this time he's on my team. Winston Marshall had the conversation between both Laura Kelly and Andres Cabrera, and Laura Kelly wants this shot again. What are you prepared to do to go up against someone like Laura Kelly? I will probably study. We know how this is gonna go. We know exactly by the numbers how this is gonna go. I'm going to mop the floor with Laura, lights out, lights out Laura, whatever, Laura Kelly, and I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going like I always have. But there's something more with this Laura Kelly, this edge that she still has, with the confidence that I think that working with swag has helped tremendously. So you better stay on target, Gold Leader. I'd hate for you to end up like your namesake with your charred remains splattered all over the Death Star Trench. Or would I hate it? Why am I still making these? Do I need to? Do we need to even film these matches? Come on, let's, I'm going back inside, it's hot.
Okay, okay, that opens up another question that we have now, PJ, because you talk about who's going to show up and who's going to play hard. We know that Winston Marshall of Team Swag has showed up. We can look at him right now on our screen. Uh, who's showing up for Gold Leader? Does Gold Leader even need a manager? Do you think he prefers to just fly solo, like Dak said in Empire Strikes Back? I think he absolutely loves to fly solo and you know he seems like he's one with the force so i'm sure he'll be fine whether he has a manager or not i'm very curious to see how this is going to play out the greatest quote in the history of all star wars canon is two fighters against the star destroyer well if gold leader and lights out are your two fighters they could probably take on a star destroyer heck the whole empire by themselves ready to get going partner i am so ready to mispronounce a bunch of star wars words let's do this bud <laughs> that is why you fail. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Introducing first. Representing Team Swag with a record of four wins, four defeats. It's Laura Lights Out Kelly. There is lights out, smile, the sunglasses, the swag, and the Star Wars rep. And we see a cute little pork. You keep that pork away from any hungry Wookiees, and we'll see you <laughs> in just a second. And her opponent, representing the Finstock Exchange with a record of four wins, one defeat, it's Gold Leader. Gold leader, less logos, but he still has his now iconic gold jacket with some sort of random t-shirt right under it. Let's get these two competitors face to face. There is lights out. There is gold leader. And I just got word, Patrick, moments before we brought everybody on screen together that we do have a manager for gold leader. So we'll let that be a surprise. Gold leader knows who it is. So he's gonna be in good hands. We know Lars in good hands. And now we move to the rules of round number one. In round number one, this is Star Wars. So 10 questions from 10 different corners of the Star Wars Schmodown Galaxy will emerge. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question, and there is no stealing in round one. You write down your best attempt at an answer. When PJ and I ask the question, you have 15 seconds to write that down. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to your camera. At the same time, you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. I'll remind each competitor you have one usage of a challenge. You may issue at any time throughout the three-round match. We'll bring in managers. We'll deliberate to our heart's content. And it will ultimately be your manager or your acting manager that confirms and ratifies if said challenge is taking place. You also each have one two, and three. JTE rules. That's your repeat. You actually heard a question right. You want to buy yourself another 15 seconds to get that correct answer. Use one of your Jete rules. You can also simply say repeat. All right. The competitors are set and ready to go. So, PJ, we just got a couple more questions. Let's start with Lights Out. Suara Kelly, you ready to get going? Absolutely. And Gold Leader, are you primed and ready to go? I'm, you know, I'm good. I'm always good. Let's get ready to Schmodown. Hey guys, Christian Harloff here. And look, it is not always easy when you're searching for an audio book, uh, you're searching for a podcast. And sometimes when you're looking for a book, it takes longer scrolling things, scrolling around, looking for things. And it does actually reading instead of standing in front of your bookshelf, waiting for a title to jump out, sign up for Scribd. Scribd is awesome. Scribd, when I first found out about it, I started browsing around and I, as I do, I put in Star Wars and Ken Napsok's book came up. You pipe in what you're looking for and there's so many great options. With Scribd, it's the world's most fascinating library, and it's just $9.99 a month. Explore all your interests in any format with millions of ebooks, audiobooks, magazines, and more for less than a cost of a single book. You can easily switch between titles and genres and the formats right from the app. And you can discover must read new works from celebrated authors like Roxanne Gay, Charles Yu, and more. And it's premiering exclusively on Scribd. And right now, Scribd is offering our listeners an exclusive 60-day trial. Head on over to try.scribd.com slash trivia for your free 60-day trial. One more time. That is try.scribd.com slash trivia and get 
that 60 day trial. The second you sign up, you get instant access to the entire library. And you guys know how much I love Wired. Well, guess what Wired said about them? Wired said that it is the Netflix for books. I mean, right there, that tells you everything that you need to know about it. It's incredible. It's awesome. You'll love it. Sign up today. Asking the first question of the match will be PJ, who is wearing a decidedly imperial hat today. Yeah. Uh, courtesy of one Mark Ellison, Ken Knapsack. We're going to start in the world of who said it. Those are Star Wars quotes. In A New Hope, Vader says that Leia's resistance to what is considerable? Very first one, right? Very first movie. I, I think this was one of the first movies I really remember watching on VHS as a kid. Four, three, I'm with you. Two, one, click for the same age. Pens down, let's go to Gold Leader. The Mind Probe. The Mind Probe is correct. How about Laura? The Mind Probe. The Mind Probe is there. PJ and I, the same age and the same height, apparently. Your next question is in the category of Revenge of the Sith. And it is. In Star Wars Episode Three. Revenge of the Sith, what power is the only thing one person had learned according to Palpatine? Now, Mark, I don't know if this is like show and tell time, but I still have my old Star Wars VHS collection right here next to that, me. That's got to be worth something, right? Yeah. I mean, it's worth everything in my heart. Five, four. Yeah, well, I need to retire. Three, <laughs> two, one. Pens down, and we go to lights out. The power to cheat death. Power to cheat death is correct. Did Gold Leader have it? To cheat death. Cheating death, and we move back to BJ Campbell for question three. We go to the world of heroes and villains. In Attack of the Clones, what species is Jedi Master Agent Kolar? Hmm. And Ellis was two for two up until that point. Yeah, PJ was also two for two until that point. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy writing some of the questions. He can't even go. Know. All right. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we're going to Gold Leader first. He is an Iridonian Zabrak. That is correct, and Laura. I just put Zabrak. We can accept just Zabrak. That is correct. Three to three. There's we'll just no stopping the uh, There may be debates about Zabrak, but there's no debate about the greatest Star Wars movie of all time, Return correct. of the Jedi. And that's the category. Here's the question. In Return of the Jedi, what is the name of the Ewok that served as the chief shaman of Bright Tree Village? Mark, I just really love the murder bears. I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, you know, they only really murdered when they were <laughs> evil. You know? Just like them, apparently. Four, three. That's a murder bear. Two, one. Bends down, and let's go to Lights Out first. Chirpa. It is not Chirpa. It is not Sherpa does Gold Leader have it? It's Low Gray. Low Gray is who we were looking for. Low Gray, correct, and it is four to three. Both great Ewoks nonetheless. Back to you, PJ. It is four to three. A uh, little more debate on this one. The second greatest Star Wars film of all time, The Last Jedi. In The Last Jedi, when R2 shows Luke the original hologram recording of Leia meant for Obi-Wan, Luke calls it a what? Did I just light the comment section on fire with my comment about The Last Jedi? Oops. I still prefer the original Last Jedi to the remake. No. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Gold Leader. That was a cheap move. It was a cheap move, and I'm full of them. Lights out. A cheap move. She's back on the answering train, so it is still five to four. Gold Leader halfway through round one with a Perfect. Bar. So we move on to the movie that forced me to camp out for some hours, The Phantom Menace, Episode 1. And your question. In The Phantom Menace, who is Sidious referring to when he says they're young and naive and that you wouldn't find them difficult to control? I feel like that's a quote about you and I, Mark. <laughs> I mean... We're pretty easy to manipulate if there's a, you know, a cold 12 ounce somewhere available. Or even a slice of pizza. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Laura, too classy for that. She's more of a champagne kind of person. Let's go to you first for the correct answer. Queen Amidala. Queen Amidala is correct. How about gold leader? Queen Amidala. 
He remains perfect as we careen into question seven. And question seven comes to us in the realm of the Rise of Skywalker. How many Oscar nominations did the Rise of Skywalker receive? Ooh, I, you know it's it's like they're they're two entirely different galaxies almost. Star Wars and the category of the Oscars. But I mean, again, these movies get nominated for a lot of stuff. I mean, how can they not? Three, two, one. Pens down, and the award for going first with this attempt is Gold Leader. Three. That is correct. And how about lights out? Three. Them. Got it. As original well. score, That's visual effects, and sound editing. Good job, guys. Hey, those are all important to a great movie. Oh, speaking of great movies, let's go back to Return of the Jedi. <laughs> and here's your question for another point. <laughs> My favorite round one ever. In Return <laughs> of the Jedi, Palpatine tells Luke, you have paid your price for your lack of what? Need the exact quote. I would hate to feel um, about the rise of Skywalker because I'm between. It's either that or Force Awakens are my favorite sequel. I I really enjoy it. It's a kind of crazy, sure, but it's fun. Ends down, and that's enough out of you, young man. Let's go to. Let's go to lights out. Vision. Vision is correct, and gold leader. Get him some glasses. It's Vision. Staying perfect. Two questions remain in round number one. PJ, what number is this? We're now in the world of mixed bag. Okay. Aaron Neal, Joe Houston, and Ragad Shar are credited as resistance officers in what Star Wars film? I mean, that's just a bunch of random people that I, I'm not even sure if I know they were in the movie. That, that, that question is the very essence of mixed bag. A hundred percent. I mean, we reached deep into that, and we pulled this out. Five, four, One day, maybe there will be a Spaceballs question. Two, one. Pens down, and we go to Gold Leader first. With the Rise of Skywalker. He nailed it, and lights out. Mm, I put Last Jedi. Okay, so that's another blemish on an otherwise sterling round one for lights out. We have one question remaining. It's a two-point game could possibly see Gold Leader get a perfect round, but here is your final question, competitors, in round one. And it comes from the world of Solo, which is conveniently a Star Wars story. And your question. In Solo, how many keys of refined coaxium does Beckett owe Crimson Dawn? Uh, Are we really were... the yeah. keys? <laughs> yeah, and then they were already writing the answer and you hadn't even finished. To I mean, be yeah, sure. In Star Wars, we're running Spice in yeah. Star Wars. Sure. Four, I like this movie, too. Three, <laughs> two, one. I'm a fan. Yeah, pens down. Let's go to Lights Out. 100. It was 100 again. Keys. And Jeez. Gold Leader. 100, and I drew a really bad key. 100 <laughs> key. I mean, kids, if you need to get keys to something, I guess refined coaxium is better than the alternative. So that was a perfect round. Let's not bury the lead here. It was a great round by Lights Out Laura Kelly PJ, but Gold Leader. Perfect 10 for 10 thus far. He is awarded a bonus question. So, Gold Leader, this question is just to you. You don't have to write it down. You can simply uh, wager your attempt whenever you want to directly in your microphone. PJ's going to ask the question whenever he is prepared. Yeah, you don't even need to draw the answer for this one if you don't want to, Gold Leader. But what if I want to? I mean, go for it. But that's Be exactly creative. Yeah. In Attack of the Clones, how many Tusken Raiders did Anakin kill on screen? I'm going to say three. I don't know if it was a guess, Mark, but it was correct. Yeah, when they say I'm going to say that, it, that, that's what passes as a guess in Star Wars because they just know everything, and that is correct as well. So that's a big extra point that Gold Leader is now awarded. It's 11 to 8. Still anyone ball game as we head into round number two. This is the wheel round, the wheel of fate, doom, and justice. Each competitor gets a spin at that dar wheel. Once you settle on a category, five questions will emerge in that particular realm of Star Wars know-how. Each question's worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing does exist in round number two. Tom Fullery, thievery, stealing keys could happen. So if you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question recedes to 
one. JTE rules and challenges still apply. It's a three-point lead for Gold Leader. So before we bring in managers to give a pep talk, we're going to ask Gold Leader, you want to spin first or do you want to defer to your opponent? I'm going to defer. There we go. He is going to defer to the more experienced player. That would be Laura Lights Out Kelly. So we're going to drop out Gold Leader and we're going to welcome in the manager of Team Swag, Winston. All right, and here comes the wheel. After a very, uh, I'm just going to say spirited pep talk from Winston. I feel Martin. like That's every fair. time Winston's on screen, it's like I just had a cup of coffee. <laughs> that is <laughs> the greatest film of all time, Return of the Jedi. So, uh, Laura, 60 seconds to talk that over with your manager. Do you want to keep the greatest movie of all time or do you want to spin away from it for some reason? It is a great film, but we talked about this a little bit this morning. Yes, let's, we did. Uh, let's go ahead and spin away, see what happens. Yeah, yeah. The, the problem is I knew Mark wrote these questions, and it's the only <laughs> thing in Star Wars that actually can confuddle everyone because he's memorized every single thing top to bottom. Yeah. Let's go away from it, please. I believe you. Let's do it. What they don't know is this is a negative three points for spinning away from Return of the Jedi. <laughs> I, look, I'm not trying to steer anybody one way or the other. It's like when, when somebody spins Eddie Murphy, it's like, can, can you please take it? All right, <laughs> a new hope is what it is. And so a new hope, the OG that kicked us off is gonna be the topic of questioning for Lights Out. Shut them down, Laura, let's go. All, All right. right, and there's Gold Leader once again. Facing off against Lights Out. Gold leader with a three-point lead. But PJ, now it is Laura's turn to climb up the leaderboard. She's got five questions in the category of A New Hope, worth two points apiece. All right, and question number one. In the realm of A New Hope, in A New Hope, when referring to Obi-Wan, Uncle Owen says that blank is just a crazy old man. Wizard. That is correct for two points. That is correct, and she cuts the lead to one. All right, and question number two. In A New Hope, what is the name of the human male bartender in the Moss Eisley Cantina? Woo her. That is correct for another two points. Sounds like a bartender name on Moss Eisley. All right, so we go into question three, and lights out. Perfect through two questions. Your third question in the realm of A New Hope. In A New Hope, disguised as a stormtrooper, Luke tells the Death Star commander that Chewbacca is a prisoner transfer from what cell block? 1138. It's another two points, Mark. Another two points. Famous numbers in Star Wars lore. And so now we go on to, oh, I'll let you say it, Peter. Uh, I believe it is in A New Hope in the penalty question. Paul Blake played the alien known as Greedo. Who voiced him? Gonna have to go multiple choice on this one. All right. Is it A, Jerry Walter, B, Hal Wamsley, C, Harold Weed, or D, Larry Ward? Let's go D. I don't know if it was a guess, Mark, but that is correct for one point. And it's just a shame how Wamsley sounds like the person who should be voicing Greedo, but it was Larry Ward. He got the gig. And now the gig, one more question, is Laura's final one in the category of a new hope. Absolutely. Your final question, how much does Han say it'll cost extra and in advance to take Obi-Wan, Luke, and the droids off world when they meet? $10,000 in advance. And that is correct for two points. That is correct. They offered to pay $2,000 and $15,000 once they got to Alderaan, but Alderaan wasn't there. It's a whole thing. All right, and so that is a very impressive round number two from Laura Lights Out. Kelly, that's why they call Laura Lights Out. And so now to try to answer, it's going to be Gold Leader, but first he gets to have a conversation with his manager, who is still a mystery. Let's Mystery man. How it all right, and uh, that is John Roca, the outlaw, ladies and gentlemen. I, oh. and, and again, maybe his, his pep talk did make the final cut just for giggles, but it was a good one. So <laughs> here comes the spin, and Let's the outlaw do it. is just... Mark, was there violence <laughs> involved? It sounded hey, like look, there was. The guy at the bottom of the screen just loves the schmodown too much. 
All right, it is Revenge of the Sith, Episode 3. Gold Leader, you and your acting manager have 60 seconds to talk it out. How are you feeling, man? Let's How are you feeling? About yeah, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. All right, absolutely. let's do it. Let's do it. Revenge of the Sith. Absolutely. All right. Revenge of the Sith it is. All right, and so there is Gold Leader after just sitting by and watching Lights Out have an impressive round two. Now he's stepping up to the plate, and his film is the one that's, I guess, kind of right before episodically A New Hope. That is Revenge of the Sith, episode three. Five questions worth two points apiece. Gold Leader, here is your first. Which actress plays female Senator Ter Tennille in the film? That would be Amanda Lucas. Oh, is that like Captain Tennille? That is correct for two points. And Gold Leader is on the board here in round number two. Your next one in episode three, Revenge of the Sith. What is the name of the large varactyl creature that Obi-Wan rides while on Utapaw? That would be Oga. Seems like I did a pretty good job pronouncing that. That is correct for two points. And Gold Leader, perfect throughout the match thus far. And he moves on to question three. And it is. In Revenge of the Sith, Obi-Wan tells Anakin that the Chancellor's signal is coming from the observation platform at the top of that what? Spire. Yeah, I mean, I would have gone with tower or pillar or column. Those were all going to be multiple choice options. I was thinking, you I was thinking tower. But and that, fine. it's been used in Star Wars before in the next movie, In A New Hope. So that is correct for two more points. And now we progress to the penultimate question in Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith for Gold Leader. Here it is. In Revenge of the Sith, Anakin tells Obi-Wan that he will not take Padme from him. Obi-Wan responds to hit less for power and what else have already done that? I'm going to say the quote. Is that okay if I just like go? I'm not going to like mimic Obi-Wan. Um, he says, your anger and your lust for power have already done that. That is correct for two more points. And it's now a lead once again for Gold Leader. It's 19 to 17. And so it's a two point ball game in favor of Gold Leader. And PJ, he can increase that lead twofold. He can go all the way up to a four point lead if he hits this final question right off the bat. And the category is Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. And here it is. In Revenge of the Sith, what type of creatures were pulling the carriage at Padme's open casket funeral? Uh, it would be Wallars. I was going to guess horses, but you are correct for two points. And that is a perfect round two gold leader has not missed yet it is 21 to 17. pj it's been a well-played match by both competitors four point lead for gold leader as we head into the final section i mean look it's still anyone's game gold leader is on fire right now but laura could still win this i'm very excited for what's next Hello, everybody. As you know, I am very, very excited all the time. Why am I excited all the time? Well, if you've been listening to the big thing, well, then you'll know. I've been raving, raving, raving about ButcherBox. I love ButcherBox. Be prepared for whatever life is going to throw at you, and you can do it by getting high-quality meat delivered right to your door. Because whenever you need a great-tasting meal that you can trust, it's ButcherBox. It's in your corner. ButcherBox makes it easy. Each box has 9 to 11 pounds of meat of your choosing. You can get 100% grass-fed and finished beef, free-range organic chicken, humanely raised pork, wild-caught lobster tails, and wild-caught Alaskan salmon and sugar-free bacon. That's just, a, that's just some of it. That's just some of it. There's no better feeling than knowing that you can skip the grocery store because there's a variety of butcher box meat already waiting for you in the freezer. Luckily, today's sponsor, Butcher Box, is offering our listeners ground beef for life. For a limited time, Butcher Box is going to give new members two pounds of free ground beef in every order for the life of your membership. Imagine never having to shop for ground beef ever again. This deal is a no brainer once signed up you choose your box and delivery frequency they offer five boxes four curated box options as well as the popular custom box so you get exactly what you and your family love butcher box ships your order frozen at peak freshness and it's packed in a 100 recyclable box and shipping is always free you enjoy great tasting high quality meat delivered right to your door when this thing was sent to my house 
and all the meats in there. My daughter's birthday was coming up, and so we made the, I, I like to grill all the time, so I marinated it, and I put it on the grill, and my wife at first, she does it, she, she's very, she likes her grocery stores, so she's like, I don't know, I don't know. I said, honey, it's, it's grass-fed, it's really good, let's try it. She's like, all right, let's give it a shot, and she loves it. All she wants to do now is get more butcher box stuff because the ground beef was so good, and not only did we use it for my daughter's um, burgers that day, it was my birthday recently, I watched the, the Many Saints in Newark, and my wife, so loving made me uh meatballs and um and pasta and the meatballs were all butcher box meat and i love that i made sandwiches after it it is so good chicken's coming to my house soon and i can't wait it feels like christmas so that's right everybody this is your chance to never have to shop for ground beef again butcher box is giving new members free ground beef for life you gotta sign up at butcherbox.com slash trivia and get two pounds of ground beef in every order for the life of your membership. Log on to butcherbox.com slash trivia. Don't be one of those people. I don't know. I'm not sure. I like to go to the grocery store. Try it. Look, did you hear that deal? Go do it. Now go watch the match. I promise you. This one you're gonna be you're gonna be thanking me for it. This is the round of will determine the match and see who advances to play the winner of Nikki Demolanta and Alex Damon. But for right now, we just need a series of numbers from each of you. We need three numbers, and those numbers may range from 1 to 20. Each number corresponds to a different corner of Star Wars mystery. Your first question, based off that, is going to be worth two points. Your next one, three points. Your final question, five points. There's no penalty for missing a question, and there is no stealing in round three. It is going to be the honor of gold leader. You enjoy a four-point lead. Your three lucky numbers from 1 to 20, or should I say your three destined numbers? I'm going to go two, three, and seven. Two, three, and seven, keeping in the top ten, and lights out the numbers of your destiny. Let's do five, eight, and ten. Five, eight, and ten. And also within the top, they're making it too easy for us here. PJ. First for Laura, lights out Kelly, currently trailing by four. PJ Campbell, our head runner, is going to be administering your questions. I'll be asking the questions to Gold Leader right now. To avoid a TKO, four points are needed, starting with the two-pointer, and PJ, she selected category number five. And category five might be a little familiar. We're back in Who Said It? These are Star Wars quotes. For two points, in Attack of the Clones, who says all mentors have a way of seeing more of our faults than we would like? It's the only way we grow. Padme Amidala. She didn't blink, Mark. It's two points. She didn't blink, and boy, could that advice be used by the managers here today that is it's correct fair. and so now it's just a two-point ball game and lights out laura kelly can take the lead with this three-pointer what's the category the selection was number eight and we are going to be in the realm of the star wars underworld which is feeling like some of the topic of today's match what is the species of lady proxima in solo a star wars story she is a grindelid once again, Mark, it's like she just knows the stuff off the top of her head, and that is three points. That is another impressive pull, and now it is the lead of Lights Out over Gold Leader. That's the bad news, the Gold Leader doesn't get a TK. The good news for the Finstock Exchange is that now Gold Leader gets to step up to the plate here in round three. Has not missed a question the first two rounds. Your two-pointer for round three. You selected number two, making it easy on me, and that corresponds to the category of Jedi Order. And your question. For two points and to regain the lead, which prequel character's first words are, did you call for assistance? Five, four, three, uh, JT, please. All right, first one, two remaining. Categories Jedi Order, the question. Which prequel character's first words are, did you call for assistance? Five, four, three. Uh, let me go JT one more time. Two, all right. Second one, you have one remaining. Categories <laughs> Jedi Order, the question. Which prequel character's first words are, did you call for assistance? Is it Madame Jocasta New? The syntax is way too good to be Yoda. That is correct. And so 
It's a correct answer, and now Gold Leader has the lead again. But PJ, that was not an easy pull for him. It cost two JT E rolls, but the game is still perfect for Gold Leader. So now we go back to lights out. She is suddenly faced with a five pointer that Laura's got to hit if she wants to advance in this tournament. And I am very excited to say, Mark, this is a favorite movie between the two of us. Oh, what 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 is it? What she did select number ten. What 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 is that category? She spun away from it earlier. We are now at Return of the Jedi. For five points and to regain the lead. In Return of the Jedi, when Lando tells all wings to report in, who is the third leader to do so? Gray leader. Uh, can you repeat the answer? Gray leader. Are you saying gray or green? I'm just not hearing it. Gray. Correct. And your winner! Gold leader! Gold leader gets it. It was green leader. Green leader is the third wing to report Woo! in. And it is just that close, TJ. It was a simple color. And the first three letters were correct, but it's gray, it's green. It is green leader, the answer. And so now. I didn't know either. I thought I was hoping it was gold leader. I, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> would have been fitting, but no, it was green leader. So gold leader is now going to enjoy, I, I guess, a, a nice horseback ride in the green room while, again, green, while we wrap up shop here. Congratulations to the Finstock Exchange. Great job, gold leader. Fantastic Thanks, match. Guys. Shout out to Laura Kelly and Winston Marshall, who both played an incredible match. Gold leader took care of business. That's what it's all about. Now on to the Damon Civil all War, right, son. You'll get, Let's you'll do get it. Your time Give me my match. Go yeah. watch Cry Macho. Get off. What's up? Sometimes, Ellis, with these positions you put me in, I don't think you guys like me very much. Uh, but anyways, John Roca, Outlaw, it is a pleasure to see you. What a nice surprise, I guess you should say, in today's match for your face to pop up on my screen. Well, Jen, if you want to make things happen, you got to make things happen. I wanted to manage today, so I took care of Finstock in the parking lot, and I'm here now just so I could confront Harloff. Harloff, you're not escaping from me. You haven't responded to me, so I have to show up and do these kinds of things and crash my brother Gold Leader's match. But hey, he didn't miss a question. You know why? Because he's unflappable. He's unflappable. None of my histrionics affect him. Uh, for God's sake, you tell Tweedle Nerd One and Tweedle Nerd Two to shut up when I'm on screen. For God's sakes. Congratulations, Gold Leader. And hi, Jen. How are you? Also, I just got the text. Uh, Bob Finstock, Gucci himself, is all right. He's yeah, going to be okay. Good. Yeah. It wasn't well, hard thank day. God for that. Yeah. I'm sure we were all going to be staying up at night thinking about it. <laughs> I know, I know. Anyways, uh, Gold Leader, I have to ask you. Uh, that was probably one of, I mean, let's face it. You played Lights Out today. Uh, but were you impressed at all with Laura Kelly's performance against you today? I, okay, I want to say I really even was, you even conceded. Wow, I really, no, Five. I really, I, I am very proud of Laura. I think she did a really great job. However, I don't know if anyone said this. I don't want to be unoriginal, but I, it writes itself. I cut her lights out. I turned the lights out. <laughs> I've, you know, I, I was. That's a good. That could be. You're a good just joke looking for that power out. analogy, and it's not working like, for you. It's, but it's you working. know. It's working, guys. You can't. I, uh, all, we can't all be John Roca when it comes to cutting promos. Let's exactly. be real. It's true. Good. You'll you learn, Padawan. In the middle of my match. It worked. <laughs> You'll learn, Padawan. You'll learn. Absolutely. No, but Laura did a great job. Winston yeah. is always fantastic. Uh, but not good enough, folks. <laughs> Listen, is... the, the Finstock Exchange is counting on you to get a lot of points for them, obviously, in this tournament and to end up with the belt at the end of the season. Is that a lot of pressure to have on your shoulders? No, it's it is uh, it is my responsibility. It's just something that I feel like I am doing. It's not something that I feel like I have to be doing. It's just like, oh, let's do it. Let's go. This is my job right now. I just I just lost uh, my employment <laughs> somewhere else. So this is my full time job now. Getting these points. Oh, wow. Victories. I have news for you. This doesn't pay much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's all right. I, you know, I'll make do. This is, the, the work pays for itself. 
Mm. You can always, you know, you can always take that jacket down to the thrift shop if all else goes. Yes. How dare it? <laughs> how dare it? <laughs> John, how yeah. does it feel to be coaching, you know? How does it feel to be managing from this position? Because let's what? face it. Yeah. I mean, look, your favorite thing to do is talk. That's really all you have to do is strategize and talk, which is something the outlaw is known for in this game. It's true. Very true. And winning titles. Don't forget, Jen. Listen, I, 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 I a thousand percent, a guy like this, listen, you, Jen, you're a sports person. You understand it for all you nerds out there that aren't sports person. Get educated. This is how it works. You work the regular season, just like we're in the playoffs now in the MLB. You work the regular season so that these people are ready to play in the playoffs. And these tournaments are the playoffs. A goal leader has been chopping at the bit. There is no pressure when you know you're destined. And goal leader knows he's been destined since day one. He's taken the hits. He's taken the losses. He's learned. He's studied. He's worked hard. We went through some stuff earlier today. He knows what he wants. And he reminds me of a young outlaw in 2016. Nothing was going to stop me from the belt. And I feel that same way when I watch this man. He's incredible. And it was my honor to even sit in here and act a fool for him because he's incredible. And it was an honor for all of you to watch the greatness of gold leader. Give it up. Well, there was certainly a lot better English in this match, thanks to you, John. Uh, sometimes when Gucci's here, I feel like I'm just reading, like, the inside of Snapple lids, just trying to figure out life, you know? I think my favorite one was that he said that we have diamond hands, and whatever other team we were playing had lettuce hands. I think that was probably <laughs> probably my favorite thing he's ever said. So. You know, I'd almost forgotten about that one. Thank you so much. I, uh, I thought I took mushrooms in the middle of that match, but anyways. <laughs> so... Chance, you, wow. you you are going to have your work cut out from you because let's face it, the road doesn't get any easier from here. That's kind of how tournaments work. You're going to be facing the winner of Alex Damon or Nikki Demolanta. Do you have a preference between the two of them? So Nikki has been shocking me uh, for this entire time. Obviously, I really would love to play Nikki, but I got to say, I came into this league making a tape, calling Alex out. I have been as as Rook said, chomping at the bit. Mm. I don't know why that's even a chomp. What bit? I don't know. Just focus but, on your promo. Keep going. Yeah, I've been, <laughs> I've been waiting. Put him in his place, John. Reel yeah. these youngins in. I've been waiting to play this man <laughs> since like probably 2018, 2017. Whenever he joined. I don't know. I don't remember the timeline of the events, but I've been waiting for him. So, you know, if, if it can happen, that's that's what I want. Nerd Chronic keeps this in your promo. The truth is he's prepared for either one, Alex Damon or Nikki Demolanta. Nikki Demolanta has not surprised me at all. We know this, to be good at Star Wars and to be married to a man who is good at Star Wars. We've seen this with Molly Damon. We've seen this with Nikki Demolanta. They have to study with them and they learn it. They get it into their bones, into their blood. So nothing has surprised me about Nikki uh, was do has been doing in this tournament. So if she takes out Alex Damon, I will not be surprised at all. These, this is the cream, as the Randy, as Randy Savage once said, the cream rises to the top, and rises that's what you're gonna to play, and that's who he's gonna play is the cream. And if <sighs> Nikki is the cream, great. If Alex is the cream, great. But he is already the cream, and he's ready. So bring it, don't sing it. Also, give Roka his match. I will Damn say it, Roka! You know I have absolutely no pull on that one, but uh, I'm sure we can make shirts or something. So, <laughs> anyways, take care, guys. Best of luck the rest of the tournament. Thank, Thank you. you. Go lead Laura, oh, it just, it's so disappointing. It must be so disappointing to play at the level that you played at today and not walk away with the W. Yeah, no, it's not, it's not great. It doesn't feel great. But at the same time, it's been a long season. It's been a pretty good season so far. And great season I'm, for you. Thank you. And I'm, I'm, uh, but I'm, I'm ready to be done for the season. It feels good. Um, I, I think I can, you know, at least go out on a high note that I played the best that I could. Absolutely. And Winston, I know that you have just bounds and bounds of respect for this woman. Oh, a thousand percent. I, I, I once again, um, the fact that I got to make a new friend and make one out of somebody so smart and talented and can cut a promo. Y'all see that Joker is she did with the last match? Like y'all clowns ain't ready for this girl. Like I wish, I wish that Laura had it in her that she like wanted to act or something. Cause I would just write a whole movie for her to just be in. Cause she's just out here killing the game. But I know she's all like, the funny thing is she's but Laura, can I share a secret you share with me? Is that okay? Sure, go for it. So Laura essentially told me, she's like, oh, I love doing these promos, but I am screaming agony on the inside of nerves while doing it. So she just like lets it, you can't tell though. Like tell me you don't look at her and go, Jesus. Like, what were you trying to uh, well, outsmart? You're very good at covering, yeah. 
For sure. She's very good at covering those nerves with just that icy edge. And that just made, that's what makes her such a dangerous competitor, honestly. Because if you were nervous before today's match, no one had a clue, truthfully. Thank you. I appreciate that. Ice water in the veins, man. Absolute ice water in the veins. So, uh, of course, am I sad that our run this season is over? Yes. But I also understand, like, let's be honest, uh, of all the Schmodown competitors, nobody has to cram more ridiculous crap in their head than Star Wars competitors. It's not even remotely close. The the, the level of intricate de detail that you have to keep organized in your brain so I'm not surprised when most, by most accounts uh, in seasons prior, this is over by the summer until spectacular. So to still be doing this in the middle of the fall, like that's a lot. So I, I totally understand that sentiment. Uh, I, I wish we could keep going together, but it's totally fine, man. I, I am proud of everything that she did today. And and I gotta ask you the question, Laura, I, you know, you were, you were out here being like, I'll kill you. How dare you take me away from Shan this whole time? I know I didn't necessarily bring you as many victories, but did you at least enjoy the some of the time we spent together this past year? We had fun. It was a fun year. I enjoyed it. Yeah, Legitimately. We did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and at the end of the day, at least in comparison to Gold Leader, I still have my job. So. Ooh. Oh, shots fired. And you ain't begging for matches like. like, like... <laughs> I can't, I can't like breathe, so I can't like finish this interview. <laughs> just like a grifter in a really bad cowboy hat, just begging for things. Like, what is happening? Yeah, and right speaking now? of cowboy, chomping at the bit, gold leader, that's a reference to horses and their bridles. Yeah, sorry you don't, like, know stuff. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you know, I'm really disappointed that uh, you guys did pull off the victory today because I would have enjoyed seeing more of this Laura Kelly in this tournament. So, <sighs> Tough loss today, my lady, but I will see you again next season. And I hope you enjoy your time off because let's face it, everybody's brain needs a reboot every once in a while, even a droid, you know? Oh yeah, I intend to enjoy my time off very much. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. I mean, PJ, if you wanted to be like the outlaw, try to trash talk your way into a match that's spectacular, I think Lights Out just showed the way. <laughs> yeah, and also it looks like Rokit actually needs to show his teammates Westerns. What are you doing if you're the outlaw and actually not showing them movies? I don't understand. There are horses in Rise of Sky. Anyway, well, here's yeah. the bottom line it, with, with, with all of this is that it's a it's a it's a fair question that a lot of fans are going to be asking because Lights Out is a beloved competitor in this entire league, not just in the division of, of Star Wars, but I think even folks who just tune in for a singles match here and again, they know the legend of Lights Out and what Laura has been able to do in the world of Star Wars, and so. Is she on a different faction next year? It's, it's a fair question to ask. And now let the speculation run rampant, I guess. Look, man, she is a legend in this league for a reason. She She's going to be back. And she's got an entire offseason now to cram as much information in as possible. She's going to be even scarier next season. I'm hoping that her and Gold Leader get to meet up again because I want a rematch between these two just to see who really knows more. Yeah, and, and a and a lights out Star Wars competitor is an important arrow to have in your quiver. And if you don't believe me, just ask Kate Mulligan right now, because what a job Major Thomas Harper has done, not just for himself and his career, but for the entire faction of the den. And so if you need somebody to be able to spur on your faction like that, Laura lights out Kelly, not bad, but not quite good enough to fell gold leader here today in the trivia contest that was all about Star Wars. We saw gold leader not blink did not miss a question and thus ended up winning the match and now we'll advance to face the winner of nikki demolanta versus alex damon what a matchup that is going to be coming it's going to be really great man it's it, it's going to be a fun one but i'll also tell you this is that now the anticipation grows because now we know who they are going to have to play so whether it's nikki demolanta or it's alex damon we know the gold leader is going to be waiting for him it's a nice position for gold leader to be in watching that match he is going to be sitting back, eating popcorn, maybe learning some stuff about Westerns, and then seeing who his opponent is, he's just going to wait it out, man. Like, he's in the prime position to really feel out what his next opponent really looks like. Hey, that's just the way things go around the movie trivia showdown. There's always a storyline. There's always a dramatic piece of content for you. You got a few of those nuggets here in this match. That is the great PJ Campbell, our esteemed head writer and a terrific announcer here on the desk alongside me, Mark Ellis, baby carrots. Thanks to Lights Out Gold Leader. 
John the Outlaw Roca, Winston A. Marshall, everybody here at the team with Skybound, the incredible Jen Sturger handling the post-game interview duties. And for you, for watching, check out our Patreon. Make sure you check out live events at the schmodownlive.com. And uh, the Outlaw, like a lot of people, really wants to get to the spectacular. Y'all can do that right now by buying tickets. Again, that's the schmodownlive.com. December 4th is the day. It's an all-day event Saturday. Whole lot of great matches there. And then maybe one consolation prize. We'll have to wait and see about that. For everybody watching, that's PJ. I'm Mark. And John Roca, please remain on hold. Somebody Stop calling me. Stop calling me. <laughs>